The COVID-19 pandemic took a heavy toll on global supply chains, disrupting everything from manufacturing to international trade. China and many parts of the Asia-Pacific saw their factories cut off from the rest of the world for months. But amid those uncertainties, many companies in Europe saw an opportunity to bring those supply chains closer to home. Turkey, with its strategic location between the two continents, became a favored choice. Over the past several years, global investors have sought to set up operations in Turkey, creating manufacturing hubs and transport links connecting Europe and Asia. The country's post-COVID rebound in manufacturing also led to a boom in exports that include machinery, vehicles and textiles. With heavy investment and a young workforce, multinational companies have their eyes set on the bigger role Turkey will play in global trade. But what challenges could derail that plan? Could geopolitical upheavals in Europe, the South Caucasus and Middle East disrupt that progress? And will a shaky global economy with rising energy prices also play a role? And to further discuss post-COVID era logistics and Turkey's place in Eurasian transport network, joining me now in the studio is Tobias Bartz. He is the CEO of the Arenas Logistics. Tobias, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. So, could you talk to us about why you consider Turkey uh, be, to be a crucial point at the heart of Eurasian supply chains? Thanks for having me. And if you let me, let me first of all uh, express my condolences for the earthquake Thank victims. You. When the earthquake uh, struck, uh, we took care of our staff. We have 30 people there. Uh, and afterwards, of course, extended our help to, uh, to the region also. And I think what we saw and what we found is one of the reasons or one of the answers to your questions. Um, the passion, the resilience and uh, the spirit of, of, of the people makes this uh, country and this region so u unique. So therefore it's at the heart, yeah, that's what we need. Supply mm -hmm. chain is about passion and people mm -hmm. uh, and that is the spirit that we want uh, for our clients as well. So uh, what makes Turkey so valuable when it comes to our global um, transport networks? I think in the recent years, with the 150 billion euros spent in infrastructure, um, you took a quantum leap. And um, that's one part. The infrastructure is there to attract, to attract uh, industry as well, mm -hmm. uh, which makes our supply chain life much easier. Uh, and at the same time, the geographical spot. Uh, within four hours flight, uh, you can reach 1.5 billion people. That's an exciting mar market and therefore it makes it a unique spot and a very powerful spot as well. So I believe your company has chosen to heavily invest in Turkey. I think you have just given that answer. But um, in order to elaborate a little bit more, what does Turkey offer compared to uh, different hubs in Europe, yeah. Asia and South America? Um, They're also crucial hubs, aren't they? Absolutely. I mean, South America for us is also a hot spot and so is Turkey here. And I think for Turkey, uh, the, the, the thing that makes it very important, very, very strong is the skilled workforce. Mm. Um, you, are, you have vast experience in industry, you have the infrastructure to match it, and you have the staff willing to work on a very high ed ed educational level. And there, therefore, for us, it's a crucial spot. And once again, not only to be a nearshoring country for Europe, but also to, to enter new markets, mm -hmm. uh, Middle Eastern ma markets, which are easier to serve uh, both culturally and, lo and uh, with regards to supply chain from Turkey. Mm. So what's the scale of your investments in Turkey? Uh, the planned investment for the next uh, years is around about 50 uh, million euros. But um, for us being family owned, if the return is good, we have deeper pockets than that, so uh, we are willing to go for it. But the, at the moment, the plan is to invest 50 million euros. 50 million euros. 50 million euros, yeah. So which sectors are you planning to invest more in? Um, we are, uh, from our DNA, uh, asset-driven. Um, so the next steps are, would be terminals. We're looking for terminals, for warehouses. Uh, we started off very successfully here three years ago with only two people uh, mm -hmm. in Air and Ocean and Road Freight. We have now 200 staff. We're looking forward to generating 100 million euros turnover very, very soon. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's time for us to put our money where our mouth is and go for terminals. So this would, if you invest more in Turkey, this would also create more employment for Turkish citizens? Definitely. I mean, we are proud to say uh, maybe in, uh, on a global level from 2 to 200 is not a massive step. But for us as family owned it is. Yeah, and of course, by having warehouses and uh, terminals, that's something which will grow exponentially. Uh, and that's our hope as well. Uh, we're happy to have staff and looking forward to investing mm. here. So, Tobias, uh, how has the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted the global uh, supply chains and have they recovered? I think it, uh, the COVID exposed the uh, fragile setup of global supply chain. 
COVID on the one side, the side and uh, the blockage of the Suez Channel for six days sure. also. And that combination uh, combined with the demand uh, that people suddenly had when they were at home renovating and doing um, showed the uh, brittleness. Yeah? And uh, yes, at the moment, because the demand drops, uh, especially within, within Europe, we see a move back to normality. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever so for the past years, as you've just mentioned, the global economy had seen several shocks. First, the COVID-19 pandemic, which disrupted the global supply chains. Yeah. And then the Ukraine conflict broke out last year. So how much have those two events disrupted your industry? Where does your industry stand now? I think it has become apparent that it's our task to build a resilient supply chain. Mm. Yeah, um, it was more of a volumes game prior, and now is, uh, the game is about giving options. And there, uh, Turkey uh, and also the Middle Corridor is a great option. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, one will never replace the other, but uh, um, I think the build-up of a Middle Corridor, entering new markets, uh, I think this is the core strength also for, for mm -hmm. the region here. You've mentioned the importance of infrastructure uh, earlier in our conversation, and you've just mentioned that Turkey has become one of the most important links of the Middle uh, corridor mm -hmm. due to the uh, Ukraine conflicts and uh, Turkey is also the part of the Belt and Road Initiative. So what kind of a role you think Turkey will play in logistics uh, moving forward? It will become a hub. It already is a hub for air freight. We just uh, prior talked uh, briefly about the new air airport, which is uh, very Im impressive. Um, and that will also be true for containerized or rail freight uh, tra tra transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, the investment, I think, is another 150 billion US dollars planned for the next 20 years. That will catapult Turkey uh, to, to the forefront mm -hmm. and can act as a, 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 as a hub for the whole region, not only Europe. Mm -hmm. You talked about um, ensuring a continued recovery through a resilient supply chain. How are you planning to do that? Not only you yourself, no. but the world. And what are the challenges before we get back to our, let's say, old normal? The question is whether we ever get back to our old normal. That's, I have that's my, also I have a my question. Strong, I have my strong doubts that that will happen. So um, it, the supply chain companies such as ours are given the task to show alternative routes. It's all about routing and uh, building chains that are not that easily broken. Um, and uh, also the reliance of stock levels has gone up. We have seen an increase in our warehousing stocks. The mm. warehouses we operate 4 million square meters, they are all full. Mm. Yeah, simply because people want the goods they need to manufacture closer to home. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, closer to home, mm -hmm. when from a European uh, view, means Turkey. Yeah, that is the, the market to actually, to actually be. Mm -hmm. we, we, we know that after the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, as you've mentioned, yep. companies brought back production closer to home. But how has it so far played out? And has this strategy proven to be beneficial for your industry or are you still seeking for alternatives? Uh, we're still seeking. I mean, you mentioned before also South America. Um, mm -hmm. there's, I, I feel uh, Turkey has come a longer way. So we need for the different uh, uh, global powers, the economical powerhouses, options. One option is South America for the, uh, the Americas, and it's Turkey uh, for, for Europe. All right, Tobias. Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Thanks Straight Thanks for Talk. having me. Thank you very much. <laughs>